Alexander's was a department store chain that opened in 1928 and closed in 1992. Thank you for your suggestion. That's why Live at Five is the most popular live hour on afternoon television. Join us Live at Five. For Christmas shopping, I browse at Bloomingdale's. I tiptoe through Tiffany's, but I buy at Alexander's. I buy gifts at Alexander's. I'm sauntering through Saks, meandering through Macy's, but I buy at Alexander's. I buy gifts at Alexander's. Yes, I buy at Alexander's. In 1928, George Farkas opened a store at 152nd Street and 3rd Avenue in the Bronx. George Farkas began working in his father's Brooklyn dress shop when he was eight. He opened his store in the New York's borough of the Bronx in 1924 and founded a much larger store, which he named Alexander's, for his deceased father in 1928 with an initial investment of $7,500. This store, located below the elevated tracks at 152nd Street and 3rd Avenue, was an immediate success, achieving sales of $500,000 in its first year. In the spring of 1929, the store was enlarged for the first of 30 times. Catering to the well-to-do middle class, the store offered discounted designer clothing and high-quality private label goods. Its advertising slogan at one time was, You'll find Alexander's has what you're looking for. How lucky can you get? The chain thrived even during the Great Depression and opened a location on Fordham Road in the Grand Concourse in the Bronx in 1933. At its heyday in the 1930s, this store was known for its discount bargains and had more sales per square foot than any other store in the United States. Its founder later recalled to Leonard Sloan of the New York Times, fortunately, I had to sell all of my stock before the crash to pay for this expansion. We were also small enough and flexible enough to survive and grow during the depression. The Alexanders that had opened on Fordham Road in Grand Concourse became the company's headquarters and eventually expanded to 10 times its original size. Positioned somewhere between a full-service department store and a discount store, Alexander specialized in low-priced clothing for its Depression-era customers who nevertheless had some pretensions to style. It kept its prices low by avoiding a downtown location, buying instead of renting, its properties investing heavily in labor-saving equipment and not making alterations or deliveries or offering charge accounts or mail order. Its buyers want a reputation for keen knowledge of the market and a nose for finding off-season bargain merchandise. Brand name manufacturers selling to downtown stores did not want it known that Alexander's was hawking the same wares uptown for less, so the company did not display such lines in its windows or its advertisements. And it took out the labels that the manufacturer insisted. Wartime and post-World War II prosperity brought Alexander's clients into the middle class, but also dispersed them into the suburbs. Alexander's was quick to take advantage of the trend, opening in 1951 a store in White Plains. By 1963, Alexander's had added outlets in Rigo Park, Queens, Milford, Connecticut, and Paramus, New Jersey. In a quest for fashion leadership in a low-margin field, and at the urging of Farkas' eldest son, it upgraded its merchandise by making exclusive arrangements with European manufacturers. Hard goods such as radio and television sets, artwork, and luggage were added. The company also redesigned and redecorated its stores. The Paramus outlet, for example, featured in facade what was called the world's largest mural, a glass and steel abstract work that stretched the length of a city block. In December of 1968, Alexander's became a public company via initial public offering raising $41 million, in part to prevent a takeover from competitor E.J. Corvette. 
Founder George Farkas retired that year due to failing health, and one of his sons, Alexander Farkas, became CEO. Alexander's continued to add stores throughout the 1970s. It added an outlet at the shopping center in Garden City, Long Island in 1971, two more at shopping centers in Edison and Eatontown, New Jersey in 1972, a store in Flushing, Queens in 1975, and stores in Yonkers and at Westchester Mall in Mohegan Lake, New York in 1977. Another outlet opened in Lower Manhattan's World Trade Center in 1980. Most sales continued to be by cash or check, but the company accepted its first credit card in 1972, subsequently increasing the total to four. About 75% of the sales were apparel and accessories in the 1970s. The chain was not selling major furniture or appliances. A serious misstep was the acquisition in 1978 of Margot's Limode Inc., a women's apparel chain with 70 stores in five states. Alexander's shed this company in 1981 for about $7 million. That year, Alexander's lost $9.5 million, more than half of which was attributed to Margot's losses and write-off on its sale. By this time, Alexander's was ripe for an acquisition by Stephen Roth, an entrepreneur who had closed the Two Guys discount chain owned by Vernado Inc. and converted its properties into suburban shopping center. Ross Interstate Properties Inc. was Alexander's largest individual stockholder in the late 1980. Sales had begun to decline during the 1970s and continued into the 1980s. Customers defected to larger competitors such as Macy's and Bloomingdale's and discount stores such as Kmart. The Eatontown store closed in 1983, and the Westchester Mall store closed in 1986. In 1987, Donald Trump, also interested in Alexander's real estate, purchased a big block of the company's stock. The following year, both he and Roth purchased more stock, bringing their holdings to 27% each. The two agreed not to compete with each other for further control of the company. The impasse between Roth and Trump ended in 1990 when Trump was forced to turn over his Alexander stock to Citicorp as forfeited collateral for a loan guarantee he could not meet. The company lost money again in fiscal 1990 and 91, about $40 million in those years combined. In May of 1992, Robin Farkas decided to close all remaining Alexander stores. The company then filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The going out of business sale is on at Alexander's just one week after filing for bankruptcy. New Jersey correspondent Veronica Mitchell was at the scene at the Paramus store. Few phrases gladden the hearts of serious shoppers like going out of business sale. And for the next several weeks, Alexander's will have a lot of consumers weeping with joy. After filing for bankruptcy last week, Alexander's Incorporated says everything must go in its 11 department stores. And everything this week is going for 10% off the ticket price. You may want to come back next week when the discount price goes from 10% off to 20% off and raises 10% each week thereafter until the store officially closes in mid-July. In Paramus, Veronica Mitchell, Channel 11 News at 10. So what are your favorite memories of this place? Leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below. Thanks for watching.